Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon meditation is based on the gospel lesson that's just been read to you. In Jesus' name. My wife and I have certainly enjoyed traveling to various cities and places in the United States. One trip took us to New York City we saw the sights, as most tourists do. But oh my, were we impressed by the tall buildings in lower Manhattan. And I'm sure the locals knew exactly that we were tourists, but because we often found ourselves. But then we took the elevator up to the observation desk deck of the Empire State Building. And then we looked down on these buildings that were so tall. <laughs> They didn't seem so tall, and yet they were 40 stories high, like the 
tallest buildings in Minneapolis. We also had the privilege of visiting Washington, D.C., again, seeing all the shrines. But the real joy was to stand in the rotunda of our nation's capital and then to look up into the dome. We have some marvelous buildings to see in our nation. In our text, the disciples experienced something like that when they came to Jerusalem with Jesus. They say, look, teacher, what massive stones, what magnificent buildings. And of course, we know that Herod's temple was one of the greatest buildings of that time. It dominated Jerusalem. But Jesus, he's not taken in by that moment. He says to them, do you see all these great buildings? Not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. A little bit later, the inner core of disciples come to Jesus privately and they ask him, when will these things happen? What will be the sign that they're all about to be fulfilled? Now the first sign that Jesus gives them is, watch out, that no one deceives you. They were to be watchful of false prophets, would seek to deceive God's people, telling them what they wanted to hear. Now the people of Israel longed to be free from the yoke of the Roman government, and so many false messiahs were part of their history. According to the ancient uh, historian Josephus, Especially in the days of Jesus, many false prophets had arisen claiming to be he, to be the one, the Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus gives them another sign. Signs of wars, rumors of war, nations against nations. He says there'll be signs in nature and he specifically mentions earthquakes and famines. I suppose today he might add the devastation of the hurricanes that the United States suffers, maybe the fires, the wildfires in California with its destruction of property and lives. However, they are not the end, even end of the end. They're, end. They're just preliminary, says Jesus. They're like the beginning of birth pains. Yes, the real event is yet to come. Another sign is the suffering that Christians will bear. And that often begins almost immediately for some people when they convert to Christianity and stand up for the name of Jesus. But that won't be the end either because the gospel needs to be preached to all the nations. He further describes the persecution of Christians this way. It will be most painful as brothers will destroy brothers and parents and children will be in conflict, cause each other's death. There will be a general hatred for Christians. Now, friends, as we read this list of signs, what's your conclusion? Many of those things are happening in great numbers right now. Now, all of this leads us to the verse that we want to focus on. Jesus says, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. May the Holy Spirit be present to bless us as we look at these words. Now to help us understand what it means to stand firm, I like to compare our Christian lives with a baseball game. Now, most people know the rules and the purpose of baseball. The batter, his goal is to get the first base, then the second, and then the third, and then the score run. And the team who scores the most runs in nine innings wins the game. There's nothing as frustration, as frustrating as a runner to be at third base and he cannot come home and score a run. Friends, when we were baptized, 
when we renewed our vows on our confirmation day, it's like we were placed on third base, ready to get home. And now the advice to us, whether we're young or old, of Jesus is stand firm. Stand firm during these latter days when you see all these signs. So we need to be alert. In baseball, the pitcher and the catcher, they like nothing better to catch a, a base runner sleeping and to pick him off base, and he's out. Well, friends, we have an enemy who likes to do that to us spiritually, and that's the evil foe, Satan. The Bible says, be, so, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking those whom he may devour. And you better believe it. Satan knows our weaknesses, and he's going to try every trick in the book that he knows to destroy faith in Jesus Christ. Now, here's just a couple of his tricks. When somebody at the church hurts your feelings, he'll be right there to tell you, don't go back to that place. You just show him. You don't need to take those kind of jabs. Or here's another one. Maybe the pastor has touched one of your pet sins. You're kind of hurting. Satan will be right there. Ah, oh, what's he talking about? That's just his opinion. Why don't you talk about his own sins for a while? Oh, and here's another one. If Satan can keep you from worshiping, hearing the word of God, he knows that he's got the battle already half won. And so he say, oh, you don't need to go to church. You don't need to worship. You don't need to hear the Bible. Just close your Bible. You know all that stuff already. Those are just a few of Satan's tricks to catch a person off base so that we won't reach the eternal heavenly home. And so Jesus says to us, stand firm, be alert. Secondly, if you and I want to reach home, we need to listen to our coaches. In a major league game, there's always a third base coach, and his job is to keep that base runner alert. He has to watch the opposition, and he shouts instructions to the runner and it's a wise runner who listens to his coach well children in your growing up years and not just being the little ones i'm also talking to teenagers you would do well to listen to your parents because they're to be your coaches who want you to reach the heavenly home here at church our coaches are the DCEs and pastors. And again, we would do well to listen to them because their job is to watch for our souls and to coach us so that we reach the heavenly home. A third piece of advice. If you want to reach home, you need to keep your eye on heaven, the goal of our lives. You know, a base runner, he's at third base. And oh, here's a chance for him to come home. But if he takes his eyes off a of home plate, he may miss home plate, the catcher tags him, and he's out. Likewise, we need to keep our eyes on heaven so that we aren't overtaken by life, making a living our jobs, our health, or just having a good time, just having fun in life. And when that becomes the focus of our lives, then we lose our spirituality. And then, then we become danger of losing heaven 
which is sad because heaven is a place of fullness of joy, and happiness, satisfaction. It's the best that's yet to come. And now the final step in understanding what Jesus means when he says stay firm. If you want to reach home, you have to let Jesus bring you home. And now here's the scene. Batter up. It's Jesus. He has battered a thousand over all the centuries. And he's just absolutely sure to get a hit. Drive you home. But you know what some people are trying to do? They're trying to steal heaven. Now in the game of baseball, rarely does a base runner try to steal home. Because usually they're unsuccessful. It's very difficult. And I assure you that nobody's going to steal heaven. Oh, there are all kinds of people who are trying. They maybe even were very faithful church members at one time. But they stopped worshiping. They stopped receiving the means of grace. And now when you ask them, they say, well, I'm just as good as those people going to church all the time. I'll take my chances. Ah, did you see the shift? Instead of left letting Jesus reach, take them home, I'll get there on my good works, and friends, that's not gonna work. So Jesus is up to bat for you. He's brought you this far. He's brought you with his suffering, his death, taking you this place so far. Here comes the pitch. Boom! And you trot safely home to heaven. Friends, let Jesus bring you home. God grant it for Jesus' sake. Amen. We rise. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. In response, we make confession of our common Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. Suffered <laughs> and was buried. According to the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke like prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come.